Today we're going to introduce OpenCL kernel programming. Specifically, we're going to talk about operators and built-in functions. OpenCL inherits many operators from other high-level languages. This table lists the operators that we are familiar with. For example, the first group is the arithmetic operations, add, subtract, multiply, and division modular, and increment and decrement. This group of operators here are for comparisons and logic operations. For example, you see this familiar greater than, greater than or equal to, and you have this logic and and logic or operations. This last group here are for bitwise operations. For example, logical not, bitwise and, uh, bitwise x or, etc. Also, we have operators for left shift or right shift. This ternary selection is also the same as we saw in high level languages. So basically, we first check certain condition, and we have two arguments follow, and one before the colon is to be chosen if the condition is true, otherwise the final uh, argument will be chosen. All these operators can operate on scalar values and also they can operate on vector values. And many of them can also operate on a mixed type arguments and we'll see more examples. First, let's look at relational operators. Relation operators we're talking about here are uh, less than, greater than, and equal. These operators, when they are used with scalar values, the operators will return 1 if the relation is true and will be uh, returning 0 if the relation is false. With vectors, the operation uh, will be different from um, the scalar values the operators will test all the components of the vector and the components of the resulting vector identify whether the corresponding test returns true or false. And specifically, for vector components, we will use all ones to represent the truth condition and we will be using zeros to indicate uh, its false condition. And because OpenCL represents signed integers using two's complement, so all ones, depends on the number of bits, they are all uh, minus one. So let's look at this example. We have a kernel function called opTest. It takes one argument, uh, that is an integer vector of four elements, and its output, and this memory object is in global memory. We first declare a private vector called vac, and we initialize this vector with initial values 1, 2, 3, and 4. The first statement here is vect plus equal 4. This is to add 4 to this vector. And because this is a vector, so the addition of 4 applies to every element of this vector. So as a result, this vector will become 5, 6, 7, and 8. Then we have an if statement. Note here that we chose one of the elements from this vector, and we are choosing the third element, so which is this one, because we're counting index from zero. This is uh, element zero, element one, element two, and element three. So indeed, uh, at this moment, this element is seven, so this line of code will be executed. What we're doing here is we are doing a element-wise and operation and this and applies to every bit of element. What we're doing here is we're taking this uh, constant vector minus one minus one zero and minus one. Now interestingly if you think about this minus one is actually f f all the way uh, with f and same here and same here. So when we apply this uh, element wise and with this values in this vector, what we'll end up with is we will do an AND with all ones with the first element of this vector back, and same thing here, and we'll AND 0 with the third element uh, in this vac vector. So the resulting vector will be really the original vector except that the third element is set to 0. 
And the next line is to do a comparison with a scalar value. So we're choosing here element two, three. So we're choosing the third and the fourth element from this vector and compare them with a scalar value seven. If you remember that we have a value zero here and eight here. And why we have a zero? Because we just end zero with this third element. And this comparison, we're gonna uh, compare this zero and eight with this scalar value respectively. Zero is of course less than seven, but eight is not less than seven. So we now have a comparison result, which is true and then false. So we represent true with minus one and false with zero. So you can expect that the first element of this vector will be a minus one or all Fs, and then this uh, second element is a zero. And the next line is a while loop. And in this while, the condition is to take individual elements from this vector and perform some logic operation. If you recall that we have all ones here in this S zero, and this will be minus one, so this is a true. And we don't have to com compare it of this. So this whole thing is gonna be true. Very last element is eight. It is greater than seven. So this whole condition is true. As a result, this statement will be executed. So we're gonna redshift this S3, which is currently eight. We're gonna redshift this value to the right for one bit. Uh, next time, the S3 will be four, and this condition still holds, but this S3 is not greater than seven. So this condition is false, so this while loop terminates. And eventually the resulting values of this vector will be assigned to the output memory object. 